I can't get as many characters in this as I want. Alright, so... Study hard, be evil, versus free markets is just good business. Vote. This is again in one minute, so get your votes in very quickly, as that will go fast. And 94th Min also wants me to drink some tea. So I'll do that now. Meanwhile, we're also going to take a quick look at the uh, other side of the focus tree. So we've got the King's Society, uh, which will have base war support political power. Then we need to choose either Yuri or Lydia. And this is really where I think the, the heavy choices are going to come in. So Yuri will increase influence, will also increase authoritarian democra democracy, whereas she is a despot. Uh, revolutionary King, Organization, Division, Attrition, Reduction, Defense. Outlawed public meetings with regulated public meetings. That's going to be an increase in political power, but a reduction in stability. And then finally we get the new Sobor. Political power increase, division recovery rate increase, research increase, and then a big shift in authoritarian democracy. Or we get the Militarist King, which is attack, reinforce rate, max planning. Max planning is good. Man, that was close. Uh, then we have a new hierarchy, which is... The increase in recruitable population, it's just a number. Entrenchment speed plus zero, and then stability. And then the King's Guard primacy, encryption goes up, decryption goes up, and then also even more despotism. So I think that Yuri's is going to ultimately be more stability. So even though we have stability loss here, the increase in political power is good because it means we can do more reforms. And also this increases research speed, and also it's a 10% boost in authoritarian democracy, which will also offset the uh, stability penalty because of more party popularity. Okay, so the result is academic study, be study hard, be evil, uh, came in second with 49%. Good lord, that was close. Agent Striker contributed 2,150 bits. Thank you very much for that, Agent Striker. And Isdar contributed 14,000 channel points. And then we have the free markets. It is, after all, just good business. And the free market won out. So we are going to do a change in course, and we're going to bring in Lydia's free markets. Which is going to increase worker discontent, so we will need to do something to counter that. But we do have ways of doing it. Following a decision made by His Highness on the employment of the industri industry in Kemerovo, it's obvious that we should set about expanding our production. But what remains unanswered is how this will be enacted. Princess Lydia Krylova has planned to set out a proposal to the economic mis minister, uh, Lev Voznensky which would undermine the current rights of the workers, but significantly increase the extent of our production. After all, trade unions and collective action will only serve their own interests and oppose the greater aspirations of the king. If we were to put these plans into action, the king may lose the support of the workers in the future. We must hope that they can see the kingdom's true potential. Done. Now, let's take a look at this. So, we are currently investing in the construction techniques. One thing we can do is this. Increase consumer factory by 5%, but this will do decrease discontent, which basically counters the effects of what she's doing. So we're going to launch that. And then the last one was going to be this one. Decreases consumer goods by 7.5%, which counters both of these, and then uh, decreases industrial capacity. I don't know what industrial capacity is. What is industrial capacity? Factory output? Factories per state? What is worker discontent level? Uh, it's basically how likely your people are to revolt. And it is tracked here. So it's currently a low level of revolt chance, but I don't know how far this scales. If it's out of 100, then we're okay. If it's out of like 20, then it could be a problem. I don't know how big a swing 3 is, so I'm going to take the, the safe choice. I'm just going to click this and we'll hopefully find out once it's done. I think it's production efficiency cap. I don't think it is, because that is mentioned somewhere else. Production efficiency gain. 
Oh, maybe it is Cap. Yeah, you're probably right. But then surely it's just the production efficiency cap as opposed to the factory industrial capacity. Uh, let's see. Nah, see, it's called efficiency cap here. Nascent industrial base, minus 15%. Let's see what that modifier says. It could just be one of the writers who got the modifiers named wrong. In the, uh... Rollover information. Yeah, see, production efficiency cap, it's, it's said properly there. Yeah, it could just be a tooltip mistake. It's entirely possible. That's also cap. Because I don't know how tooltips are done in this. Whether you just put in the code to whatever the tooltip is representing, or if you're manually writing them in. I would have thought it would just automatically come up. Production efficiency cap, yeah, this is, these are all caps. So this is called... What's that decision called? It was the worker concessions, wasn't it? So we'll hover over the cap and then if it has implement worker concessions as one of the things there, then we'll know. The throne in the th throne room sat empty as the two wolves circled each other, baring their teeth with eyes pointing daggers at each other. King Rurik has decided to take a short break, leaving the prince and the princess without their king. What once was a peaceful throne room has been transformed into a battleground as Rurik walked out of the door. You have no care for the people, Yuri cried, angered how Lydia would just ignore the people's plight. All you want is for a powerful to gain more power and crush their subjects. Do you have no empathy at all? How do you think a kingdom is supposed to run, brother? Lydia replied cynically. It's not like we can magically rain down wealth and equality at every subject. This isn't your dream world, Yuri. Get over it. Of course it's not, Yuri said, starting to get angrier. He knew Lydia liked it when he got angry and he didn't care. However, we can't ignore what our subjects are going through every day. The poor are starving in this bandit-ridden wasteland and you don't care. Oh no, Yuri's poor little friends outside in the plaza are hungry. Whatever will we do? Lydia replied with a sarcastic tone. Yuri stared down at the floor, gl at the floor glum. We really are polar opposites, aren't we? You finally got something right for once. The wolves continued to circle. It was the optimized one. Okay. Ah, we've done the looting. Okay, so as we're going with Lydia's market, I'm definitely investing in schools with the looted goods. So we're going to invest there. And then we will go looting again as soon as another decision is available. Yeah, there's no more raids to prepare yet. Menjiang has defeated the Mongolian People's Front in a war. Order has been restored to the steppe. So that's the uh, Chinese puppets doing their thing. Meanwhile, we're up to three civilian factories now. That's up from one. Huzzah! Oh yeah, you're right. Prepare a raid against the Federation Nobrovarisk and Alte. And it's not like we're short on command power. A change in course, national focus completed, and we also have an operative. So let's do that first. Okay, apparently I can't click on that. New national focus then. I think we are going to go and lean right. Industrial expertise will slowly improve.
Following the decision made by His Highness on the employment of the industry of Karemvo, it is obvious that we should set about expanding our production. Surely it's Her Highness. This is her choice. Uh, it is obvious that we should set about expanding our production, but what remains unanswered is how this will be enacted. Princess Lydia Krylova has planned to set out a proposal to the economic minister, uh, Vozanansky, which would undermine the current rights of the workers, but significantly increase the extent of our production. After all, trade unions and collective action will only serve their own interests and oppose the greater aspirations of the king. Whoops. That was the same. Oh no, this is different. I was clicking on the same one again. Sorry about that. The time has come to break with the outdated economic system that our kingdom currently upholds. Unions and workers' rights have proven only to be obstacles to our economic potential. Removing these laws and significantly reducing the power of the unions will certainly benefit our short-term output and remove a substantial amount of power from the hands of the union leaders. But we continue to run the risk of antagonizing the working classes. They still believe that the old system works best for them. Regardless of this risk, we shall push ahead with the, unnecess with the necessary reforms to unleash our as yet unrealized economic potential. Well, here's the thing. It should just automatically grab those troops and use them. Still can't get an operative. I wonder if spires are just not implemented or something. Also, who was it we're raiding? Novo Sibiusk and Alte. So it's these guys. Uh, one thing I will do in that case is set up a field marshal plan with an offensive line here, just so you can get some planning preparation going, which should definitely help if this is going to be, as I assume it will be, a raid. And this will give us 61% attack bonus, which we definitely need. The units won't suddenly lose that. I still don't know about these decisions. So who is getting influence at the moment? Where did it say that here? Lydia's currently getting the influence. Raider Board of Conflicts, yeah, that's what I assumed. Don't think spies are fully implemented, maybe not at all. One game is Germany had one spy and he had zero skill. Yeah, and I can't even get spies. I have an operative slot. I mean, that kind of explains why they were free to recruit. Men Jiang declared war on the People's Revolutionary Council. Which is Vavileski. Vasilves. That guy. Alexander. The Red Army in Exile. Although that's getting awfully close to me. I just realised that's an that's actually one of my neighbours. Oh, I don't like that. The event's about to time out. Oh, you want me to initiate? Okay. Uh, now I understand. We will initiate once this is prepared. How long do I have? Oh, 11 days. We're fine. Focus completed. We are leaning right. So let's get the truly free market. Following the success of our recent reforms to the economy, it's obvious that we should continue to pursue the plan laid out by Princess Lydia and liberate the markets from its remaining restrictions. State intervention will be limited and the last of the unions will be muzzled in order to create an environment for a truly free market. Soon, we will need to wait for the inevitable boost to the efficiency of our industry that will inevitably arrive, establishing a great advantage over our surrounding enemies. So we'll lose 15 political power, which we can definitely afford. Worker discontent increases, and we go free trade. Which is actually going to be a really big boost in terms of production and everything. Ah, now I can recruit an operative. Uh, we'll go with the one guy who has a portrait. And bonuses. Oh no, they all do. Oh no. Politically connected. Those are general bonuses. We're going with Kolchak. Kolchak. Really? Denikin and Kolchak. 
pretty sure it's a different Kolchak, but still. And we're going to build a spy network in Novosibirsk, because that's what we're about to go raiding. And speaking of raids, we have seven days. Your planning prep is nearly done. So I'm going to keep this open so I can keep an eye on the ticking of time. I also have loads of political power I could be spending on other stuff, and we will do so in a moment. We will scavenge for loot once we've attacked here. So are we ready? We are ready. Boom. Boom. Doing all of the raiding. And we can also take a look at the cap. It's not cap. Modifier's not there. King's Unions, Voznensky, State Control Trade Unions, Minimal Safety Regs, Literacy, Nascent Industrial Base, Legacy of the Siberian Plan. It's gone up, not down. Scavenging, poverty, power tools. It's not there either. Ming Jian does have a focus tree. Actually, I wonder what like a uh, neutral focus looks like. Let's choose a rock. No national focus. Okay, so there is no neutral focus tree. So Menjiang actually has one. That's interesting. Brittany has one. Ulster? None. Yeah, I have oil. That's how my GDP is up. Although none of these I think are actually calculated because we're still a warlord. So it doesn't matter that we have GDP. So did that raid ever happen? I don't think it did. Or I just haven't unpaused. Okay, so we can get resource extraction in exchange for construction speed, which I don't think is worth it. We can get factory industrial capacity goes up. Production efficiency goes down. So production efficiency is just how much you generally produce. Oh no, the gain goes down, but the maximum goes up. See, we have production efficiency cap, which is the maximum. So what's industrial capacity? <laughs> Because there, they're side by side. Industrial capacity goes up, production efficiency goes up, maximum goes down. Massive increase to worker discontent, we're not doing that. That's also a decrease to discontent, although it also means far more goods factories. We're still on low. I kind of like this idea. Gain goes down a little bit. I mean, we're going to be producing the same stuff for a long time. So I think we're going to go ahead and choose that. Uh, we could also do some Warlord development now. We could lose gain for consumer goods. We could get some free infrastructure. You know what? I actually quite like this idea. Yeah, let's spend 50 for free infrastructure as well. Cool. They refuse tribute, as is expected. Novosibirsk has told us they reject our offer and are ready for the battle. We must ready our men and prepare for the fight. Alas, bloodshed is sometimes unavoidable, and we must prepare for what is to come. If they aren't going to cooperate, it is time we take the loot from Novosibirsk by force. Sounds of gunfire are continue to resonate in Russia.
And there we are. So right now we're winning, but they're probably going to pull in more troops. And of course, they've got rid of the uh, field marshal. But we are attacking from three, three different angles. We do have maximized planning preparation. Though it actually dropped to the max. Yeah, getting that planning prep was huge. 95, on 85, 86. More decisions are available. Oh, right. Yeah, we need to make a choice between these two. Lydia versus Yuri. Right now, Lydia's in the lead. Everything we've done so far is Lydia. Hospital was Lydia. Um, yeah, economy was Lydia. So I'm just going to do a save to see if we really are locked out of having the other one. Because I want to know what these do. If these are meant to be a way of balancing or if they just like reinforce what they're doing. So we're going to say Yuri. Okay, we can unlock hers as well. We just need to remove his. Okay. Yeah, we can disable. So we can meet with the union leaders, which will give us uh, efficiency. Sway sympathetic generals, which will give us army experience. Or sponsor cultural events, which will give us a tent stability. Oh, only for 35 days, though. I mean, none of those are amazing. And what about Lydia? Meet with the industrialists. That's factory output. King's Guard influence, division recovery, or expand mining operations, resource gain. But again, these are just temporary. They're just ways of increasing their strengths. But now we have all of them unlocked, and we can basically unlock them now at will. We don't need to pay five every time. Unless maybe to close. Looked on the wiki for industrial capacity, commonly called IC. And IC represents the sum of the country's factories and ability to output finished goods. Base IC is determined by totaling the number of factories of each controlled province. That is hard to find three, not four. Yeah, I hate the rating system in this game. It's terrible. Which is why I generally don't do it and why I can't play as um, Broken Coast in Old World Blues because it's so reliant on the absolutely horrendous border skirmish mechanics. Charles the 50th, thank you very much for the follow. Red CV6, Otherling, and Elite Viper, thank you very much for the follows. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so border skirmish is going to be completed. There it is. Our reports have returned. Our men hurry home with trucks filled with loot and blood smeared over their hands. They congratulate each other for the successful raid against the unsuspecting enemy, patting their comrades on the back and taking the last few shots of the survivors scurrying away. We proclaim a victory in this skirmish as our men cheer and whistle in the history of war, eager to present us their treasuries from the prize they, they prized from the grips of our adversaries. So we gained one, and we also get spoils of war event. Or... Not. Right, now we're also missing... Um... Motorized. Oh well. Are we seeing any trends yet? Yes, we're seeing trending upwards for industrial expertise. Slowly improving a monthly rate of 1. Current development status. Oh, this ca uh, category is 0 out of 240. Should society development progress in this category reach 240, our level of development will improve. Should it fall to minus 240, it will decrease. Cool. I like this system. This is a cool system. It's like more organic changes in terms of your economy and your nation's makeup rather than just these big increases. Like Old World Blue system is also quite good because there's just a lot of different factors at play. But I like this. Victory! Our raiding parties drag home great bounties tied down to the roofs of the military vehicles and lumped in sacks carried on horseback from enemy territories. With these treasures, we are able to fill our coffers, restock our armories, and increase production in our local industries. The balance of power is clearly shifted in our favour, and each skirmish to come, we are better armed to tackle these challenges that encroach across the wild Russian frontiers. 
We gain stability, we gain war support, and we also stole 175 Mosin Nagants. Sweet. Which I'm fairly sure is more than we lost. Though I don't know for sure. But that increase to uh, war support and stability is really big. So, raiding good, yo. Need to do more of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of you together again, put you in a field marshal, stick you on their border, and just prepare another battle, just so we can make sure that our planning preparation stays high. And we're going to put Rurik in charge once more. I'm just going to leave these in one army. I don't think there's really any reason to separate them at the moment. Although this would give us a little bit more control over who is commanding. If we're expecting to do lots more border raids, then we probably want... Ronin in charge. Because his attack is four. And I think it does choose a random general for the ones that you have. Like here. Revolutionary Council has defeated Menjiang. War as hell. The Mongolian Civil War. In a shocking turn of events, the world watches in awe as the remnants of the Red Army, based in Mongolia, declared war upon the co-prosperity spheres Mongolia and one. The peace treaty stipulates the sphere will not interfere in the Red Army's activities in the east, a sure sign of expansionist goals of its leader, General Alexander Vasilevsky. A military man and one of the finest generals in the decrepit Soviet Union, Vasilevsky now turns his attention to the northern factories of central Siberia. That's us! While many once thought his brand of Red Army survivors little more than a horde of surviving, no, a horde of starving Mongolian bandits, it would now seem that many warlords vying for supremacy over the Shattered Union now have yet another opponent. From Tiger to British Seas, the Red Army stands above all. Except the Vikings. Yeah, that was the first, uh, success, the first successful Viking raid indeed. Okay, academic base is now also trending upwards. Gaining a two, instead of just the one from the uh, industrial expertise. And that's because we spent loot on this. Kuznets base in, consumer goods down, resource gain efficiency up, King's Unions. In a bizarre symbiosis of ancient ways of the Rus and the modern ideals of Bolsheviks, King Rurik has declared that trade unions will be free to cooperate within reason. This has surprisingly served the king well, as the peasants who would otherwise call for his overthrow are now placated by their state-sponsored unions. However, if the people are given a taste of freedom, who knows where it may lead them. Worker discontent still low. Meanwhile, the scavenging continues, and we still have a loot available. Which means we could get raided by somebody else. A truly free market, so we can now get the economy for the modern age, which will start our poverty rate improving. Decreasing. Reducing poverty. And then we'll probably do... some other stuff. And we'll need to think about exactly what. We have, at long last, completed the necessary reforms for our industry that will develop a suitable base for future production. The direction of the royal economy has ultimately been decided. For better or for worse, the days of our ineffective economy are gone, and Kera Kemerovo has truly become a home of an economy fit for the modern age. The extra capacity that our changes have brought will prove instrumental in our future prospects for the region. His Majesty is pleased with the Kingdom's progress, and there is now a lot less holding back the King's immense ambitions. Our choices will decide the course of our economy. Poverty rate will slowly improve. 